In this short video, I'm just going to recap on the code that runs our Raspberry Pi water monitor, concentrating just on the MicroPython program that I pulled together from various sources, rather than the hardware side of things. You can see the whole project video, which includes some of my stumblings through the basics of the Pico, by clicking the link above. But here let's get down to business, by plugging the Pico into the USB and opening Thonny on my host computer, which is a Raspberry Pi 3B. Our program can be found in the Files pane on the left-hand side, and you'll notice that it's called main.py, which means it will run automatically as soon as the Pico is powered up. Now, I want to use this opportunity to tidy up a little bit of that code, so I'm using a save as to keep the original, just giving it a suitable name, and here it is, line by line. First of all, we have two imported MicroPython modules, one for the hardware side of things, and one for time. Then I'm assigning names to my two LEDs with their hardware locations on the GPIO pins. Next up, I want one of the analog digital converter pins to read the signal from the moisture sensor. Then, when the program's running, I want it to do several things. First, light the green LED. Then there's a bit that's taken me a while to get. That moisture reading is analog, and this line turns it into a digital reading as a 16-bit integer somewhere between 0 and 65535. That value, at any one time, would effectively sit in the brackets at the end of the line. Now I need that integer to accurately reflect the voltage, which I can do by dividing by the 65535, giving us a value somewhere between 0 and 1, then multiplying by the system voltage, which is 3.3 volts, or 3,300 millivolts. We can test this out with a couple of lines of code that aren't really needed in the final program. They display the voltage in the shell area of the screen, once every two seconds, and you can see when we try it out, the voltage going up and down, depending on if the sensor is in the water or not. Now we want our program to do something with that information and respond if the voltage drops, which we've seen it does if the water sensor is dry. And here I've set a value for the voltage under which the alarm will be triggered. My alarm uses a for loop, which essentially means that my red LED will come on and go off again five times and then have a little pause afterwards before repeating. And here we see our program in action. With the sensor in the water, the voltage is high so the light doesn't flash. But as soon as it's out, the voltage drops and our alert is triggered, stopping when our sensor goes back into the water and our voltage goes up above the threshold again. Now, as I said earlier, I want to make some tweaks to the program, so I'm closing my backup and reopening main.py. Now my hardware's moved on quite a bit since the prototype, with power management now provided by the Pi Moroni LiPo shim which has its own LEDs, so I'm not really going to need that green one anymore, but I've decided to leave it in the code and just set its value to zero. Now I just want to tidy up some other bits. Firstly, I want to look at those modules, and instead of importing the whole machine library, I just want to bring in the bits I need, the ADC and pin, and now I can strip out wherever I've got machine in the rest of the code. This undoubtedly makes everything look a little bit tidier. Whether it affects the performance of the program, I'm not sure, but it will make adding extra lines a bit simpler. Now we want to do the same thing with uTime, and instead of importing the whole library, we just want the sleep bit. So I can type in from uTime import sleep, and then in exactly the same way as I did for machine, I can strip out uTime from all those lines of code. This actually now resembles the magazine article that I got the code from in the first place. But I'm really glad I did the longhand version, as I think I've got more understanding by going the long way round. And that's the program as it stands complete, and it's working really well. But, and it's a pretty big but, with the program running continuously, my battery life is too short to be practical. Of course, I could use a bigger battery, but what I really want is a software solution using deep sleep states, but that will have to wait for another video. And if you think that sounds interesting, don't forget to subscribe, so you won't miss it. For now, I'm pretty happy with my compact water monitor, even if I do have to recharge it more frequently than intended.